think there's a lot of effort to be put into making a video sequence like this. And then what happens is, yeah, let's face it, it gets a bit boring at the end as everybody started to see everything they wanted to see. So let's just wrap it up, finish it up, and let's go. It's turn eight, and we roll for initiative here. Okay, so the barbarians clearly lost initiative here, which is actually not what the Amazon probably want. They have to move first. And I'm not really sure what movements we can make here. We've got the castle with a centaur here, one pip and a centaur here, a bunch of very weak units. So I think we just basically have to put everything we can into defending the last hex. We can't afford to lose anything on turn eight. And so that's their turn. <clears throat> They've got a maximum stacking of five now in the city. The barbarians will go now. And really what they need to do is just see what they can do to max out coming into the hex. So they got their Vikings here, not very strong, but they'll just move around the edge. They can go right there. They'll go ahead and bring this Runica up to within striking range of the city. And now they just need to take out Tarsus with as much as they can. Not knowing for sure what's in there, but having a pretty good idea. Let's figure out what needs to move around over here. Those silver pieces can stay there. That's a full up spear made there. It's not going to matter if Tanga falls this turn because we're only going to have one more turn after this. So we'll move like this. These go one, two, three, one, two to there. The husk girl's there because they can build up. That's fine. So what can we move in to take this out? We've got a spear maid, a husk girl. We can only send two guys in. So that's what we'll send in right there to Tarsus. So here we are in the combat phase and Silver fires last with a level D, so the C's will fire first for the Barbarians. We've got three Huskarls at C2. Let's do those first. And that's a good enough to take out that silver piece, which is permanently destroyed. Okay, now we can regroup. No hexide limits matter, so now the Barbarians can move everything in for the final combat. To get extra guy coming in, they can regroup out of the hex. <clears throat> One of these guys so they can cross the wall of, this is actually a spear made with a, like that, but we'll just go ahead and go here like this. Okay. Production for the last turn. The old Amazon can be built. I guess I can build two Amazon points. So we'll do that or one charmer. That's a good question. Yeah, we'll build one Charmer, get that up to Strength 3. <clears throat> and then over here in Tarsus, the Barbarians can... Berserker, Spider, Spear Maid, Huskarl, so they'll build up the Huskarl. As you can see, once they start owning all of these cities, the Barbarians are tough to, to defeat. Uh, now I can... Build one step of archer there. Take that two-factor thing off. Um, Huskarls can be built here. Putting that in that place. And then here. Actually build that up all the way. I guess I'd have to... You know, I can't really leave Nico open. I would have had to leave somebody back here. Probably... The Huskarl got built up, can't be that bad. Probably the Berserker would have stayed back in Nico. Tanga could take one. Let's see if I can actually build something. I do have an Amazon left. So this Amazon can be built. It now belongs to them. It's not going to help them very much. <clears throat> and then over here, we have three... Three steps for a barbarian. Just try to find something interesting to build from the stack. 
Here's a spear made. We'll just build up a three factor spear made here, like that. And Nico, then the Berserker would be able to build up to there. So we're moving on to turn nine. We'll roll for initiative as if it really matters. It doesn't really matter. Okay. But <clears throat> we'll roll it. <laughs> So the Amazons will have to go first. Well, for lack of anything better to do, they would sacrifice themselves there. And that doesn't make sense then to do a spoiling attack out of there. They could pin those three units and leave two in there. That might save them for a leave the castle and pin these three here. We won't be able to move. <clears throat> That's not a bad plan. So that would leave the castle and the charmer in Bredun. Uh, interesting move. Interesting move. Might be one last possible way for the Amazons to pull off a pure victory of some kind. So now that these guys are pinned, by the Amazonian move. Uh, let's see what happens. Presumably take these guys out. So the smartest thing to do would be to move this guy here, like that. Uh, they're all pinned so they can't move in and out. This spear maid. What do I do? Move the spear maid in here with the Viking and try to take them. We know there's a good castle in there. This could be the way that the Amazons might pull this off. Okay. Well, the Amazons might now regret doing this, but they'll try it. And the Amazon immolates herself on the spear maids. Four spear maids attack. The combat is right here. And that's going to be good enough. And that's the end of that Amazon. They're the victor, so they can regroup. So we'll send this spear mate here. Uh, over here, and the Amazons are attacking. So, yikes, look at all this. I'm not so sure I want to reduce the Runica to try to take these guys on. So they've got Hellcats at B, and I got two Bs. And I've got a spider at B, and the rest are Cs. So we'll shoot the spider. As a B4, and he fails with a six. It's probably a she spider, actually. So now their bees shoot, and I have a two B3s. So the Amazons will shoot their B3s, and here they come. One hit, which will happen on a spear maid. <clears throat> so now we've got four husk barrels at C2. The only hits they can get. And they pull off one hit, which will happen on this Amazon. So there's another dead Amazon, unfortunately. Round two, they'll try to probably try to pull back now. So the spider will get a shot. Uh, Runica doesn't want to shoot. Spider, come on, spider. You were made for this. No, you were not made for this. <laughs> All right, now these bees will pull back and retreat. Interesting result. Okay, so now we build up again. Let's build a witch over here. And it's a level B mage in Tanga. And here we're done. A one step. None of those things there. I guess I'd actually build that witch over here to max out my strength, strength there. Basically built everything and lost everything that can be built for one gold piece. So, Tango will stay open here. Uh, barbarians will build up whatever they can. I'm not going to worry about the one strength point there. Uh, spear made. This is maxed out for three. I guess they should build something that's worth three. Over there, they can at least garrison it. So, build the castle there. And we have one point left here. Uh, I'll just leave it. Okay, finally turn 10. Still hanging in there, those Amazons. 
I thought this would be a tough place for the barbarians to get to. It's going to take some luck. Now let's see who gets the initiative on turn 10. And once again, ah, that was important. They lost the initiative. So we're going to get everything that we can in here. Since the barbarians won the initiative, so that's one, two from those sides. We'll get the wounded fly in for three. And they can bring in two more units for four and five. And that freezes everything else up. Uh, they can also bring over some spear maids and these guys to be brought in for overstacking. So the spider will move back over here. Now the spider can stay there too. This person to Fargo. Okay. The final battle is being fought. Can they destroy the castle in three rounds? That is the question. It's a very important question. It may not be as easy as it looks. There's the witch, Hellcat, Centaur. The problem is they do have a lot of weak units, the charmers, and finally the castle with four steps. Okay, so the first thing that can shoot is the charmer. And the charmer, um, let's see, I've got a chariot charge possibility, but nothing strong enough to really do anything. So I won't do that. Casting the Hellcat in general to, I think it's early to cast Revenge. I could cast the Furies and fire immediately. That's probably what I need to do. So let's fire the charmer for two steps. Firing the Furies, the Runica will try to dispel that. Here's the dispel effort. This is something they really could use. A three, no, nope. they didn't dispel that. So, the Furies has been cast. All friendly units in the wizard hex fire immediately. Okay. Well, um, I assume, uh, this is one of those unclear things in the rules, but I assume that means that the witch can cast her spell immediately. So, she will do so. The witch will cast Hellcat for eight Eight. There she goes. She came in for one turn to cast Hellcat and then has perished. But she gets to roll. 8d6 at f1. The Runica could try to dispel this. Desert Hex for the remainder of the battle. I don't have a lot of desert units there. That's not going to matter. Just looking at the Barbarian spells. Milk and Honey. I don't think, well, I think the honey might be interesting. Dawn Raid. I can do the Dawn Raid on my turn. That wouldn't be necessary either, so. If I want to try to dispel the witch, I think it's worth it. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. We'll certainly find out for sure. And we tried to roll the die. It bounced out, but it was good enough. So they don't get to cast Hellcat. The witch has been thwarted. Okay, now it's the... Runica's turn, and the Runica then will shoot back with, but I can overstack with the Horde. She'll bring in a Huskarl, overstacked. Before I do that, I have to fire all of the Amazonian units. So first we'll fire the Hellcat. Is it two B3s? We'll shoot. And one hit by either the Centaur or the Hellcat. So that's going to happen on this Huskarl or, oh no, on the Spear Maid. And then the Charmer's done. And then the castle gets to shoot its four shots at C4. It's pretty good. That could cause some serious damage to the Barbarians with C4. And it did with three hits. That's going to take a hit on the Huskarl, then on a Spear Maid, and then again on another Spear Maid, the Runica. That Fury spell is pretty good for the Amazons. Now they're going to cast, she's going to go ahead and cast to bring a Huskarl in. And now it's the B level Vikings. I've got a B2. These guys roll Cs, so Viking takes a shot. And pulls it off, hit on the castle, and then we've got 
seven Huskarls. That's okay, that's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven C twos coming back at you. But a poor roll with only one hit. Unfortunately, that does again nail the castle. And then I've got four C ones. See if the Amazons can do better than the Huskarls. Huskarls were quite dismal there. And then Barbarians aren't rolling well. Okay, it's round two of the combat. Okay, so the Charmer, she's got one last chance. The Charmer will shoot with Hellcat. And that'll be the end of her. Uh, the Runica will not try to dispel that. So let's see if... Their Hellcat spell. There's a bunch of tiny little Hellcats come out scratching. I'm not sure what Hellcat actually does to visualize that, but it does create two hits on this Huskarl and on another Huskarl. Not too bad. Now it's the Runica's turn. Now I think the Runica will do Cry Havoc. That'll be the end of that Runica. And they'll be doing the same kind of 8d6. Cry Havoc. So that's 5, 6, 7, 8. Maybe I won't do Cry Havoc. I'll do Berserk. I'll do Berserk at the castle. Now you know what? Given that I sometimes I forget that the spells can't destroy anything. So it might be better to go ahead and cast Spear Maid in... Bring her in with the little horde spell. So that, there they come. The bees fire first. We've got two bees. The B3s coming in from the Hellcat and Centaurs. Two hits. Roll the wrong color die. Don't ever use your own die against you. Chung, chung. Okay, here's the Viking. Now. And the Viking did a good job. They're all down to one pip each. The castle has a C4. And it gets a hit. And so I guess we'll do that against the Spear Maid here. It's really quite a fight to the death. Quite exciting. Okay, so we got Huskarls next. Huskarls 2, 4, Huskarls. And five spear maids. Okay, here's the four husk girls coming in. Need to get some hits. Failed again. And five Vikings. Not five Vikings, five spear maids. Failed. Oh, I rolled those in the wrong order, didn't I? Well, there's still a chance. As it's the final round of combat, we've got two B3s coming in <clears throat> from these Amazons. One hit. Which they can take on a Spear Maid. Okay. The Vikings have come into their own recently, so the Vikings will try. They failed this time, though. And now the castle is done well. Let's see if he does it again. Does it again. And so I have to take another hit on the Spear Maid. Let's see if the Husk Girls can do anything. Mm, looks like the Vikings might just... Not the Vikings, but the Amazons might just pull this off. But here we go. And this is the roll. The roll of the century yields one hit. So, Centaur, I guess, or the Hellcat. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay. And so I've got one, two, three Spear Maids. Got to roll two ones. Can they do it? They don't do it. And that forces a retreat. And the Amazons win. Congratulations. Okay, hi everybody. I'm going to wrap this up. Just finished up the Barbarian Raid scenario. And the Amazons won. It was amazing to see. 
they got enough luck, or the barbarians had enough bad luck, that the Amazons were able to hold them off at Bredon. As I thought, this was the best place to put the castle. Very difficult for the barbarians to get to. They essentially had only one avenue of attack down through Nico, around the corner, through Farga and Tarsus. A lot of big battles here, a lot of attritional battles here. But at the end of the day, the Amazons just had enough luck to pull it out. It was a pretty good game, I have to say. Um, aside from a bit of cheating I did here and there, I don't think I missed a lot of things. Of course, people will pour over these videos if anybody's actually doing that. And they'll find some stuff that I made mistakes with. Okay, that's fine. That's part of what happens when you do these videos. So pointers that I took here are, first of all, the terrain makes a huge difference and the types of units you have. If you can't get across a river in this scenario uh, with an aquatic unit, which the barbarians by their very nature really don't have, except for the Viking aquatic unit that can come around the corner here, um, you pretty much are stuck coming in across uh, this road and then, of course, the other thing is this Crimson Lake. There was a guy who mentioned this Crimson Lake might be playable as a mountain hex, but due to the rules, a lake is treated like a sea. And if the center dot of this area is in the lake, it's treated as a lake. Um, I could see an exceptional rule made to that point, but it wasn't for this scenario. Okay, what else? Second point. Uh, I did a lot of pondering about spells. I edited out some video time where I was thinking about it, but the choice of spells is so crucial in this game. It really makes the game interesting. The other thing is playing with the optional dispel, which I did do. I'm waving this around like it's a wand. <laughs> the optional dispel. I recommend playing with it. It adds some extra spice to making decisions. And it's not a guaranteed thing. I wish more of these spells weren't so guaranteed, but in some ways the attack spells aren't guaranteed because you can roll badly on the attack. Uh, so that's sort of uh, taken care of. With most of the spells in general, I like the way they play. Another thing that's easy to forget, which I almost did forget, is that the spells themselves can't take out a unit. They're not allowed to affect a unit on the last hit very crucial near the end of the battle the spells from the spell caster that are the attack spells just aren't any good and unless they have something different like a healing spell or something now the barbarians have the transport a unit capability plus over stacking on that spell very powerful spell for this situation didn't give them enough impetus to win the game but definitely an interesting spell to play with and against. Okay, that's really all the pointers I have from this that I can think of right now. Wanted to wrap this up. I've got some other projects coming down the pipe. Next project will be advanced squad leader projects. Then I am going to probably head over to the victory blocks of war. When I analyze it similarly to Wizard Kings, the rules need to look over carefully and see you know what what needs to be taken care of there and then a playthrough with that should be fun what else um after that i'll probably go back to war and peace this is a good reprint of the original game from 20 25 years back played it when i was in high school or something like that loved the game uh, was had some unique systems it's a bit dated i suppose but uh the reprint is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I want to have a look at the campaign game rules this next time. If you haven't seen all of the videos I've got on this, you can come back to my channel and check them out. Uh, so I kind of jump around. I like a lot of different games. ASL is probably my favorite game. Spend the most time with it over the years. I left it for about 10 years, came back. And some changes had happened in the hobby and the play of the game, which were interesting. But... That's a different uh, conversation. Wrapping it up here for Wizard Kings. That's it. I'll see you soon. Bye.